Welcome. At Memorial, we want to do two things. Learn to know and follow Christ and invite others to do the same. What we mean by that is we want everyone to become all that God intends for them to become and not settle for anything less. Our hope is that everyone feels that our church is a place where you can come and belong. Welcome to the worship service this morning. We are so glad you're here, and may God receive all the glory as we worship together. Well, I too want to welcome everyone to our Biker Sunday. It truly is a, a special day that we get to celebrate together for our church family, uh, for our biker friends, for our Angel Tree families that we have invited to join us today. Uh, I want to just start off by expressing our thanks uh, to our, our biker friends who provided toys and donations uh, for our Angel Tree families. Let's just thank them for all that they have done. Um, this day couldn't be done without you and your generosity, um, and we're so thankful for you, and really for many, many years that we've done this together. Um, it's been a wonderful tradition, um, and of course, in memory of JY, and uh, there have been hundreds of toys, and I, I, I would even say we're in the thousands now of, of toys that have been donated um, in our biker brunch in the fall, and, as, and we as a church have the privilege then uh, to deliver those toys uh, to families families that are going through a difficult time and to bring them a little joy during their holidays, uh, during their Christmas. Um, and we're so thankful that we get to be part of that and to be able to express to them and encourage them uh, with a message of hope. Um, so this year, uh, we were able to deliver to, to many families. There's 21 kids, and each kid's got three or four toys. And, and so uh, we were able to also, there were some extra toys that were, uh, that were able to give towards uh, kids that were in poverty conditions all over the world. Um, and we're able to do that during Christmas time as well. So, so your gifts and your toys just kept giving. Um, and we're so thankful that you were uh, so generous in doing that. Uh, wh what a blessing it is, as I said before, to be part of this special act of kindness um, that you would be willing to, to give out of your generosity and your big hearts. And we're so thankful for our biker community. And we want to celebrate that today. And we're encouraged by it. Well, if we could start off in a word of prayer and just start our time um, praying and, and thanking the Lord for his provision and uh, bringing us all together for this wonderful purpose. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. Um, Father, we give you honor and praise for it. Uh, we're thankful for our biker friends that were willing, uh, out of the generosity of their hearts, Lord, to, to give toys to those that are going through a difficult time. And we pray that that was an encouragement to those families, uh, that they would uh, be given hope, they would be given encouragement. Uh, Father, we thank you for the time that we could spend together and, and share from your word. And we pray, Lord, that it would be a challenge to our hearts and it would reveal your love for each and every one of us. And in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, Fiorello LaGuardia, anyone, raise your hand if you know who that is besides it's an airport. Do you know who that is? A few of you? Okay. Uh, well, he was the mayor of New York City from 1934 uh, to 1945, and he was a beloved mayor of the Big Apple. Uh, Brennan Manning tells the story. He was an interesting mayor, and he was very well loved in the city, and he would do things like this, the story that I'm going to share uh, from time to time. Uh, well, he went into one of the parts of the city. It was actually one of the poorest parts of the city, um, and he went into a night court. And he dismissed the judge and said, you take the night off, I'll sit in the bench, and uh, I'll take over as the judge. Apparently in the 1930s you could do that. Uh, I don't think you can do that now. Well, lo and behold, a, a elderly woman sat before him, and uh, she was accused of stealing a loaf of bread. See, her daughter's husband had, had left her, her daughter got sick, and now she was left to take care of herself, her daughter, and her two grandchildren, and they were all pretty much starving. Well, the shopkeeper of whom, where she stole the bread, uh, would not drop the charges, stating that if, if she didn't get punished for this, well, uh, it'll teach everyone else that they can do this to my shop, and, and this just can't happen. Uh, so LaGuardia, Mayor LaGuardia agreed, and he punished this older lady with a $10 fine. 
And while he was giving that verdict, he was actually reaching into his wallet to pay for it. And he did so. And then he issued a fine for everyone in the courtroom uh, for 50 cents. And he fined everyone in the courtroom for this reason, for allowing an elderly woman, woman to live in the town without bread and to be able to feed her grandchildren. So he said, everyone here needs to be fined for your behavior. Well, the now red-faced grocery store owner, some 70 defendants, and even the New York City policemen uh, that all had to pay the fine, and $47.50 were collected, and they were given to that dear old lady. Well, it's a small picture of what the Bible, specifically a book called Romans, uh, tells us about God's love for us. You see, God is the judge. And all of us have done wrong, no matter how small or how big, or for whatever reason, uh, we all must be punished. But God decided to, to pay the fine, so to speak, for us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to die for our sins. And his love and his death provide us with so much more that I want to share with you today. I have the privilege, privilege to share this so much more with you. And if we could go to uh, Romans chapter 6, and the first of the so much more we'll find is grace. Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 14, we'll start there. If you remember, we actually, the first part of this chapter we studied uh, during our Easter service, and we'll continue in verse 12 says this, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments of, for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. So grace. Um, the first thing I want to talk about under grace is that Sin can be your master. Uh, what if I told you that all of this time in your life, uh, before Christ, you were controlled by the power of this world? Now bear with me here. There, there is an enemy out there that will do anything and everything to keep you from being, uh, or, uh, being free from your sins. And that person, is, is, that being, is given a name. It's, it's the devil. It's, it's Satan. And even today, there will be distractions to keep you uh, from hearing the, the very best and the greatest news that you will ever hear. I mean, who puts a roof on on Sunday morning? <laughs> Apparently this guy. Uh, there, there are distractions that will be happening today to keep you from hearing the greatest news that you will ever hear. Because our enemy does not want you to experience God's love, uh, to be forgiven to, to live for something more than yourself. While it seems like the ultimate goal, and this is what the world will tell you, is to, to please yourself, to do everything for, for, for yourself, for me and for I. And you will not find peace that way. You will not find hope. You will not find fulfillment if everything that you do is for yourself. There is more to life than that. So what does the Bible tell us to do then? Well, in verse 13, it says to present yourself to God, to give your life to God. And you might say, I, I, I don't want to do that. I, I, don't wanna have, I don't want anyone to have my life. It's, it's, it's mine. Um, I think Bon Jovi sung about that. It's, it's my life. Uh, it's against the nature to surrender to someone else. Why would anyone want to do that? <laughs> Well, here's why. It says in verse 13, it is because God is the only one that can bring you from death to life. Let me put it this way. Uh, let's say, and, and God forbid, that you were diagnosed with a terminal disease and, and there is a doctor that has the treatment that will cure your illness. But it comes down to, to these three conditions. Number one, you must be willing to admit that, that you have a disease and it's in need of a cure. Secondly, you must be willing to agree to a, a set rules of behavior. And, and then third, you must agree to, 
to this treatment if you, and to be able to share this treatment with others. Now, you would be like, well, where do I sign up? Uh, let me get in my car right now. How do I get an appointment with this doctor? Well, the same can be true with your decision for the Lord. To give your life, to present your life to God. You must be willing to admit that you have a disease called sin that is in need of a cure, and the only cure is trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, you are willing to, to follow what this book says, a set of standards of behavior that, that are really for your own good and for your own growth. And when your heart is soul and, and soul are changed by Jesus Christ, it is something that you will want to share with everyone because you have found and experienced the cure for your sins. See, it's even greater than that. I, I think that illustration even falls a little short because it's even greater than that according to Romans chapter 6. You, you have a condition that is even more serious than a disease because no hospital or, or treatment can help you. Um, the Bible actually says that, that you are dead in your sins. You need to be revived. You need to have the paddles dragged out and put to your heart. And God is saying that he is the only one, the only one that can do that. Uh, see, when you see it is as, as your life as going from, from death, a death sentence, to an eternal life of forgiveness, it changes how you live your life. It changes your view on life and your heart towards God. Your behavior changes. You become an instrument of unrighteousness to an instrument of righteousness. You have purpose. You have eternity of mind. You strive for something that is bigger than yourself. And when, where you become an instrument for the God of the universe. Matt Chandler said, without a heart transferred by the, transformed by the grace of Christ, we just continue to manage external and internal darkness. And you may be experiencing that right now, where you have this internal darkness inside of you, and you need to experience being going from death to life, and you need grace. And that's where we find grace in verse 14. If going from, from death to life was, was not good enough for you, well, let me introduce you to grace. It's not a person, but an, it's a, a, a measure or an outflow of the immeasurable love of the Father God for you. F.F. Uh, F. Bruce says, said this, the, the law demanded obedience, but grace supplies the will and the power to obey. Hence, grace breaks the mas mis mastery of sin as law could not. Please hear me when I talk about grace. This is what grace can do for you. Um, you are met with compassion when you are hurting. You will be found when you have felt so lost for so long. In your depression and anxiety, you can find hope and you can find comfort. That's what grace can do. Grace is undeserved kindness, straight from the creator of the universe. He doesn't have, to, God does not have to answer us, but the Bible tells us over and over, especially in the Psalms, that he hears us. He doesn't have to save us, but he has a plan established before the foundation of the world to provide salvation to all who believe. And he didn't have to love us, but the Bible tells us that he was the first to love us. I want everyone here to be able to experience the grace that God has for you. And when you do, it becomes, as the Romans 6 tells us, really a, an entire body experience. Your, your body, your, your heart, your mind, your soul will never be the same. Uh, what you do, what you think about, the goals in your life, the, you know, where your hope is, the joy that you experience, that all is because of grace. Now there are, are sins in your life that you cannot imagine not being part of your life. Uh, it's been how you've acted all of your life. Or you've always participated in it. It's, it's how you've been. This is how you feel like you, you are, part of your personality perhaps. You've, you've done this for most of your life. But the promise here is that you can change, that you can be a new person, that you can go from, from death to life in your sins, and, and you can give an, be given new life through Jesus Christ. You might say, well, how can this be true? Let, let's, let's, let's just go to real life here. Um, well, what you will do, or what will you do, 
when you are tempted to tell a lie, uh, to give in to your lust, to lash out in anger with your words, or to be jealous, or to overeat in worry? Will, will giving my life to God help me in all of these things? Is, is that what you are saying today? Is that what I'm saying today to you? Yes, it is. I mean, can you imagine this life with me? Where you face a temptation and, and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You have a heavenly Father in heaven that is willing to listen to you and give you the, the power to defeat this sin. And you have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who has lived the temptation, knows what it feels like on the other side, and can carry you to victory. You have divine teammates that are able to help you in your fight against sin. It's a tremendous blessing. And it's all because of grace. And because of grace, death no longer hangs over your shoulder. Death becomes a, a gateway to eternity in heaven. There's no second death. But wait, there's more. There's more that comes with trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's also freedom. And we'll see that in verses 15 through 19. Romans 6 verse 15 says, What then are we to sin? Because we are not under law, but under grace by no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, uh, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sins, sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. The late Tim Keller said these words about the freedom that you can experience through grace. And he said this, When you understand grace, it begins to change your heart. And it begins to nurture the new person God is growing within you. The result is real patience, real kindness, and real behavior change. See, it is not a, a forced behavior when you experience God's grace. It changes you from within. And as it says in verse 17, it, it comes from the heart. See, when you're changed from the inside out, from, from God's grace, from trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, it becomes, your heart becomes changed. Your heart becomes thankful, as it says in verse 17. You are, you are not under obligation anymore to the old life. It's not an ob obligation anymore. You are now a believer in Jesus Christ to, to live a holy life, to refrain from sin, and the obedience that you have in your life comes out of thankfulness. And you might ask, well, thankful for what? What am I thankful for? Well, Jesus, Jesus, really, Jesus was willing to leave his rightful throne in heaven to come to this dirty place called earth, and he dealt with family tension, with betrayal, with political unrest, with mistreatment, and finally abuse and persecution and death on a cross. Jesus suffered all of that for you. And when you know and you experience that and, and, and you trust in that and you believe in that, it changes your heart. Not only does it change your heart, it provides you freedom from sin, as it says in verse 18 and 19. Freedom. Listen, it's, it's not the freedom to do whatever we want. That's not what it's saying. Uh, it's, it is the freedom to choose to follow God's will for your life. For your life. Because as we give our lives to God, as we, as we trust in Jesus Christ, we begin to see more and more that God's way is the very best way. Can we say that together? God's way is the very best way. Let's say it again. God's way is the very best way. Remember that. Uh, there are too many blessings on the path that God has for your life to ignore it. Uh, and to return to the old way of life, to, to the old man, to the, to the old creature, we, we know where that leads. That leads to heartache, to despair, 
to loneliness, to destruction, to broken relationships. Uh, you are set free from that life through Jesus Christ to live a life that he intended for you all along. So your freedom is a reminder of what you've been freed from, really. A freedom in Christ points to the freedom from your past, from your sin, and from the old life, and into the new. The truth of the Bible, is it, it cuts through the, the imitation that is out in this world. There are so many that claim to be free. But if they are honest, they really have a master. And if you do not have Christ, you know that, it's this, that this is true. That you are carrying the, the chains of the imprisonment of your own heart. It's a burden you feel when the idea of death enters your mind. You can't shake the feeling of, of the walls coming in closer as you think of your own eternity, as you think of when this life is over. You have never experienced the freedom that Christ can give you. That's not freedom. That's not freedom if, you, if you're in your own mind and, and you're suffering through what could happen to me after this life. But God can take away that burden. Your sins can be forgiven. You can be free and God can take away those burdens in an instant. If you only ask him to forgive you and to save you from your sins, you will experience the ultimate freedom. See, freedom doesn't mean no rules. That's not freedom. That's anarchy. That's chaos. It's freedom within God's plan. The life the creator of the universe designed to live, that is freedom. And you become free to do what is right. Because as we discussed before, you are no longer chained by sins. You are no longer controlled by the evils of this world. You can experience freedom in Jesus Christ. And as John Calvin put it, obedience is the mother of true knowledge of God. When you know and fully realize that God's plan is best for you and who he is and what he's done for you, you will begin to strive to obey the God of the universe. The next thing we see when you experience God's love, when you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, you experience hope. And that's in verses 20 through 23. Our final point for today. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time for, from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of the, those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin, you have become the slaves of God. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now God offers, uh, offers us so much more. Any more than this world could ever offer us. See, His grace, the undeserved kindness that the Father offers us results in a free gift offered to everyone called salvation. Freedom from the results of sin and and the power of sin. See, God gives us that hope. And it's not just any hope. It's not an empty hope. It's not a, a glimmer of hope. Or, or maybe, just maybe this might happen. No, it's eternal hope. And it lasts forever. And, and more on that in a moment. I'm curious, any of you ever watched the uh, YouTubers and, and TikTokers, and I'm embarrassed that I just said TikToker out loud, <laughs> but it, has anyone seen those, that, those videos that people... Uh, video of themselves, I guess, on, on the edge of uh, high-rise buildings, and they're doing like flips, and they're doing chin-ups, and one little slip, and it's over. Uh, and they're doing these things hundreds of feet in the air. Well, it very much reminds us of verse 21. Um, for the end of the, those things is death. Um, what, what really are they gaining from that? A, a few more Insta followers? Uh, it makes no sense to me, and, and frankly, it just makes me uncomfortable thinking about it. Why would you do that? Well, we know that, that people are perishing from taking selfies. Um, the scientists are saying that people are going up to volcanoes as they're erupting, trying to get a good picture. Not a good idea. There was also a guy that lost his life trying to film from the wing of an airplane. 
Verse 21 spells out what is the end of this type of behavior. It's death. But unfortunately, there are many in this world that are taking that same risk with their eternal life. Every day that is lived without the forgiveness and being freed from your sin, as it says in verse 22, is a day that you are eternally separated from God. That's the eternity, the eternity that you are facing. Now, you have may, done, may have done things in your life that have brought you shame, but God wants to take away that shame, to, to redeem your past and to bring you in your present and in your future grace and freedom and hope. Listen, a, a life lived without Jesus Christ is a life without forgiveness and without hope. It's not worth it. Instead, no matter what happens to you today and tomorrow or the next, if you trust in Jesus Christ, you're safe because your eternity is safe. So I ask you today, will you give your life to him today? Because if you do, you will go from death to life. Paul wants to make this clear as eternal life is repeated in this passage. And, and in, even in verses 22 and 23, it's only separated by a few words. You see, our sin is what separates us from God. It's been that way ever since the Garden of Eden and, and will be that way until the end of time. The payment for your sins is death. But there's good news. See, verse 23 is the ultimate bad news, good news verse in the Bible. The, the worst news that you could ever hear in your life is something to do with death, a tragedy, a loss of life. See, that's the punishment for our sins. It's always been that way. But the good news, as it says in verse 23, is that we have a free gift that is offered to each and every one of us, and it's called eternal life. It's called a salvation. And the only way that you can have that, as it says at the end of that verse, is through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. Jesus had to die on the cross. He had to pay the penalty for our sins. And if you ask forgiveness of your sins and trust in Jesus Christ with your life now and after this life, God will save your soul forever. He promises us that. So will you make Jesus Lord of your life? It is the best decision that you will ever make in your life, and it has the most impact on your eternity. I want to close with this. There's, I want you to think of yourself um, as living in an apartment, and this may be true of many of us here. You, this part may not be true. You're living under a, a landlord who has made your life miserable. Uh, he charges you exorbitant rent. Um, it's when you can't pay, he's willing to loan you money, but it's at a fearful rate of interest that you just get more and more into debt. He barges into your apartment at all hours of the day and night. He, he wrecks and dirties up the place, and then he charges you extra for not maintaining the premises. Your life, your home life, is miserable. But someone comes along, and this someone says, I, I have taken over this apartment, I've purchased it, and you can live here as long as you want for free. The rent is paid up. Uh, you have been upgraded to the manager's apartment. What would you experience at that moment? It, it, it would be a lot of joy. You, you feel like you've been saved from, from really a life of torment. You are delivered from the clutches of an evil landlord. But what happens next? Uh, you hardly have time to rejoice when that old landlord comes knocking on your door. There he is, mean and demanding as ever. He has come for his rent. Well, what do you do? Do you pay him? No, of course not. He doesn't own the place anymore. Now, do you pop him in the nose? No, you don't do that either. He's much bigger than you. No. You confidently tell him this. You say these words, you have to take it up with my new landlord. And he may bellow and threaten and manipulate you, and you quietly tell him, you can take it up with my new landlord. 
And if he comes back a dozen times and all sorts of threats and arguments and he even has this uh, waving this legal looking document in his hand and puts it in your face and you simply tell him, take it up with my new landlord. And in the end, he has to. He knows it. He just comes and and bluffs and threatens and tries to deceive you and, and thinking that the new landlord will never really take care of you tell lies about the new landlord and try to drag you down. Well, if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are living under a landlord that is very much like this, that does not want what is best for you, that wants to drag you down, that wants to make your life miserable, that wants to take the joy from you, the hope from you. But when you give your God, or give God your heart and soul and you trust in Him, He takes over. He provides you with a new life and a new heart and a new eternal home, and he does that all for free. And when the enemy, after trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior, when the enemy comes knocking on your door, you can confidently say, take it up with my new landlord. That's what God can do for you in your life. And it's even greater than a new landlord. He can be your heavenly father. He can be your salvation. He can be your friend. And the invitation is this. If you want your sins forgiven, eternal life in heaven, to experience grace and freedom and hope, it is only through the free gift of God, salvation. By you praying to ask God to forgive your sins, to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, to believe that Jesus died on that cross and rose again, and ask God to save you, and He will. He will. And if you've never done that, may you pray that prayer today in your heart of hearts. And if you have questions, we would love to talk to you more about that. How you can go from death to life, from slave to free, from unrighteous to righteous, by trusting in Jesus Christ today. I encourage you to do that in your heart of hearts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your free gift. We thank you that you offer that to each and every one of us. Father, we ask that if there's anyone here that has not trusted in you, that has not have their sins forgiven, that they would be able to do so today that you would touch their hearts, that you would save them. Father, we're thankful for that free gift and what it provides for us. It provides grace. It's a, a, really a picture of grace. It provides freedom, provides hope and joy, provides eternal life. Thank you. Thank you for our biker friends and their generosity today that we celebrate. Thank you that we can have a meal together. Thank you. Lord, for your word, for your encouragement, and for this beautiful day. And we pray that we would present our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope you felt welcome and challenged by God's word and were blessed by our time in worship. At Memorial Baptist Church, we strive to invite people to know and follow Christ. And our YouTube channel is one of the ways we do just that. So please feel free to subscribe down below and share it with others. If you'd like to learn more about NBC, visit our website at nbconline.org. And if you'd like to give to our ministries here at Memorial, there's a link below to do just that as well. We hope to see you again soon. 